Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Inside Spurs channel. Happy Thursday now afternoon. It is afternoon, okay. I always do that, I always got to double check. Hope you're well, hope you're looking after yourself in all of the madness that is that weather outside. It was pretty horrific last night. Uh, went to bed thinking, am I about to get flooded somehow? Um, whatever you're up to today, look after yourself, okay. Keep out of that weather if possible. And if you're going to the gym, I know I'm watching you, okay. Just know that. Make sure you're doing legs. Anyway, we're talking more importantly around Marcus Leonardo today, the Santos striker, um, and a new kind of report linking Spurs towards him as well. Um, to give you a bit of an update around some videos for today, we've got a few really nice videos actually, potentially a few, but definitely at least one, um, around not only what Spurs are looking forward to in terms of January purchases of players. Um, we do have some updates just just in general around some of the guys that are going to come in and work with Johan Lang as well. So plenty to get into in other videos, uh, but we're talking about this one of Marcus Leonardo. And just really quickly, really cool news to hear that Ange Postacoglu is up for another manager of the month coming forward. This could be three in a row. I don't think he's going to win it. I do actually think it'll be Unai Emery at Aston Villa because they've had a fantastic start to the season as well. Um, and for player of the month, it isn't Madison. It isn't Son. It's actually Christian Romero, which is more than deserved. And he could potentially be on for it, for sure. Um, there's some good players in that list for potential player of the month as well. But I think it's rightly deserves that he does have some acknowledgement for being in that race, uh, regardless if he wins or not. <clears throat> but let's jump in and talk around Marcus Leonardo. So this came from Sport Witness, who I've been, as the days go by, I'm getting more and more impressed with Sport Witness and... They're reporting on not only players that are on loan from Spurs, but also players that Spurs are interested in. And amongst other things they report on, I'm really impressed with some of the stuff they've come out with. Uh, and they put out that Marcus Leonardo, Tottenham Hotspur keeping an eye on the 20-year-old. Newcastle United are keen and have been linked repeatedly this week. Um, you know, there are European clubs scouting him. Now, to give you backstory to Newcastle first, and then we'll talk about Spurs. Newcastle have been linked with him quite heavily over the sort of last week or two. Um, you know, in terms of what the value might look like, we're not too sure, obviously, because you know some of those, <clears throat> excuse me, some of those prices from Brazil can get inflated quite a bit because of like agent fees and things like that. And if you remember actually correctly, uh, Man United were really heavily linked to Lucas Moura when he was coming out of Brazil, and he ended up going to. Um, PSG, because PSG were happy to pay his agent way, uh, agent fees, which I think were like 10 million or something ridiculous. So, yeah, some of these fees can be a bit miscued and things like that. But yeah, Newcastle very much interested in Marcus Leonardo. And <clears throat> I don't sit here and watch the Brazilian League every day or every week. I don't. So a lot of these sort of deals from South America, you know, rely on people that, you know, do comment from, you know, that side of the world. You know, we've had people talk about Santiago Jimenez from Cruz Azul. We've had people that sport CF America talking about Sebastian Cáceres. So this will hopefully be no different that people will talk about Marcus Leonardo a little bit. Um, I'll go through his sort of profile. I'll go through how his season's been. Um, I'll also go through kind of what I've seen of him. Okay. So Marcus Leonardo Santos Almeida, wicked name. Um He's 20 years old. Uh, he would actually turn 21, okay, towards the end of the season. He's born in, in May. Uh, he's at Brazil attacking forward. Uh, he plays for Santos. Uh, his contract expires December 31st, 2026. In regards to the season that he's had, in terms of the stats of 2023, he played 24 times in the Serie A, not the Italian league, uh, played 24 games, scored 13 goals and two assists, so 15 goal contributions over that 24 game period. In the Copa do Brazil, he played four times, scoring three goals. In the Paulista A1 Premier Fase, what, wow, wicked name that, uh, four goals, two assists in 11 games, and he, in the Copa Sudamericana, one goal in three. So in all, contrib in all competitions, he's played 42 times, and he's got 25 goal contributions, 21 being from goals. Now, what I noticed of him was that... Uh, there's a few things, actually. I was quite impressed by a few things. Um, he isn't the most 
athletic when it comes to his speed. He's not the quickest player on the pitch. Uh, his hold-up plays good enough for a guy that's not exactly, you know, your, your six foot three, six foot four kind of guy. Uh, composure in front of goal, it's not bad. It obviously can be improved, but not too bad. Um, his composure and taking penalties is decent. I noticed, I was watching a video and I was like, I'm two minutes in, I've seen four videos of his penalties. I don't know if they're trying to sell me on something that we haven't got Harry Kane now, so we, we need a uh, penalty taker. So I noticed that. I noticed his link up play was quite good in terms of you know his flicks and his tricks and his you know knocking it over the top of a defender and things like that. So all those things quite impressed by. Yes, don't get me wrong. I don't think he's the quickest. I don't think he's the most athletic in the air. I think he's kind of like your all rounder that relies more on his IQ when it comes to having the ball than it would be his raw physical gifts, which is a lot like Harry Kane in a way. I'm not saying he's Harry Kane whatsoever. I'm just saying Harry Kane never relied on you know speed, the ability to out jump people, the ability to out physical people. It was all about using your body to his benefit. So you know, Harry would obviously get tight to a defender and roll him. So there was no physicality in terms of I'm going to push you out of the way. I'm going to knock you out of the way. It was I'm going to let you roll over my shoulder so I can spin in behind you. Same to a degree with Marcus. Um, I thought his link up play was actually quite good. I mean, I did notice a few videos where it's like waterlogged pitch and actually still close control, things like that, that I think are so key sometimes to, you know, an style system where I think you're starting to see slowly but surely week on week Ange, Ange Ball in terms of the attacking third it will start to get better and better and better we are still very early on in this whole new regime under Ange the thing with having an option that I think is different to Son which obviously yes you have a lay over Lee's you know very large very large striker good in the air you know fairly athletic actually for a big guy as well which is quite cool I've noticed that you know He's got a bit more about him than you think. He's not just some big guy that you launch the ball up to. He's actually quite quick for his height. For me, you know, I, I like the idea of having a striker that, like a Sonny, loads of quickness, runs into the channels, you know, hunts down, you know, uh, pressing, I mean, hunting down, pressing a defender or a keeper. Then you've got like an Alejo Valise, you know, a bit more of a, a target man style who can do link up, who is quite quick and running behind, but, you know, can win a header and things like that, to having a guy that's more of a a style like a Harry Kane, where he's got a bit of pace, but it's more about trickery. It's more about linking up play. And it's important, I think, in my opinion, to having those different varieties of strikers because different games call for different players. You know, you might be playing a, a back line that's, you know, a little bit smaller, but very nimble, very quick on their feet, you know, can kind of negate Son a little bit. There you go, there's a lay of Lees. Let's put a big man up there. See how they like playing against the big man. Yeah, there's some games you're against you're against giants at the back, and you know, Sonny's important because he's gonna pull them left, right, and centre to places they don't want to go to. You know, they might you might have, you know, your old school defenders not stuck in the mud as such, but then you want your trickery guy to kind of link up play, suck you in, spin in behind you, things like that. And I think that's what Marcus could potentially offer. It's not to say I think we're going to get him. I'm just saying it's important to have the option of different style of players. You look at winger, we've got Richarlison, who gives you a striker kind of style player, a bit trickery, you know, link up plays, getting better. You can tell it's getting better. And then you've got Brendan Johnson, who's just rip roaring pace, runs in behind, can finish a ball, things like that. You've got Kulisevsky on the wing, you know, a bit trickier, uses his body to kind of roll you, uses his body to not lose the ball and things like that. And you've got Brian Hill, who's very tricky, very nimble, you know, will try and beat you on the outside, things like that. So it's important to have those different options because different games, different games call for different things, you know. But yeah, that was just a little bit of a rundown of Marcus and I will keep an eye on him for sure. Um, definitely looks a decent player, That's, you know, 20 years old, scoring a lot of goals in Brazil. I don't think he's the next coming in Neymar, but, you know, why not? Why not? I don't, you know, I think Charles and Market had him at like 17 million euros. I think it'll be a bit more than that, probably towards like the 25 mark. But, yeah, we still need a striker. This could be, one I wouldn't say an unearthed gem, because I think there's teams that are like him, but it could be that style that we're going, you know. But anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy it. Drop a like on the video if you did. It always helps me out. Drop, a, drop it in the comment section below about Marcus Leonardo. Is he someone that kind of tickles your fancy? If you don't know a lot about him, 
please go have a little look, sort of little watch some YouTube videos. You'll learn quite a bit about him just from a few clips, that's for sure. And um, obviously, if you do like Santos and you do like Marcus Leonardo, or you know a lot about it, hit me in the comment section below. Tell me what you think of him because it's important that I learn as much as you learn from me. I like the two way street we got here. Um, subscribe to the channel if you are new and hit the bell notification for more because, like I said, I've got another video coming out later. Really exciting. Some, there's some really exciting January plans you're going to want to know about. But anyway, guys, this is the end of the video, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Take care, guys.